must be a powerful bitch. <laughs> What's up, witches? I'm Allie, aka Bronx Witch, and welcome back to my channel where you are the magic and where I make videos about Wicca the religion, witchcraft the practice, and tarot. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I make my magical and medicinal herbal potions, aka oxymels. An oxymel is an herbal extract made from fresh medicinal herbs, raw apple cider vinegar, and raw honey. I was super blessed this year to be able to participate in a farm share with the Sawmill Herb Farm in Massachusetts, and I had access to all of these wonderful organic medicinal herbs all summer long. As the summer drew to a close, I wanted to make sure that I could preserve these herbs for use through the winter, and I figured the best way to do this would be to turn them all into oxymels. I call my oxymels potions because unlike tinctures, which you take by the drop, oxymels are more like a syrup and you drink them by the spoonful. Oxymels are a really easy and delicious way to preserve the magical and medicinal properties of any edible herb that you're working with. And oxymels have a shelf life of nine months to a year, and sometimes even a bit longer if you keep them in the fridge. So to make this batch of herbal oxymels, I've got my herbs, my honey, my vinegar, and my jar. I'm starting off with a clean and sanitized 32 ounce jar. I'm gonna be using a clear jar so you can see everything, and then I'm going to transfer it all into an amber colored jar. When it comes to making medicine, I prefer to use amber jars to keep UV rays away from the herbs uh, so I don't have to worry about them going bad in my batch. I'm working on a few oxymels today, one made with sage and lemon verbena, which will be great for stomach upset, and another made with anise hyssop and echinacea flowers, which will be great for fighting off oncoming colds. So to prepare my herbs for use, the first step was to wash them thoroughly. I did that yesterday and then I laid them out on a tray of parchment paper on my windowsill to dry thoroughly. You'll notice that the herbs are completely dry to the touch. They haven't dried out entirely. That would take more like a week of sitting on the windowsill. But after a day or two, there's a little bit of rigidity and crunchiness to the leaves but they're definitely still fresh enough to be used. The most important thing is they are completely dry to the touch and there is no water or moisture on the herbs themselves because if I have water and moisture on my herbs then that could cause my oxymel to go bad or grow bacteria and I definitely don't want that. I'll also say that you don't have to make a 32 ounce jar of oxymel I am making this much because I know that I'm going to be sharing this with friends and family and visitors to my shop, but you can definitely make a much, much smaller batch for personal use. Once my herbs are ready to be used, I start off by picking them off of the branches. Technically, you could include the branch in your oxymel. I don't think it would hurt at all, uh, but it might lead to a more bitter or just a different flavor. And I really like to just maintain the flavor of the flowers and the leaves of the plant. So I take them off of the branch. Technically, this is up to you, but I recommend that if you decide to keep the stems and branches, that you perhaps break or cut them up so that more uh, plant material can fit into your jar. The process of picking the leaves off of the stems is my favorite part. I love breaking down and processing herbs, flowers, produce, plants of any kind. That's really my favorite part. I think it comes from being a kid and being stuck at the table to shell peas or pick off the ends of string beans and just do all of those little tasks uh, that went along with the gardening and farming that my grandfather and mother would do uh, in the summers. And so I think I just go to a really wonderful nostalgic place. 
But while I'm picking off the leaves, I am putting my intention into what I'm doing. I'm praying and giving honor and thanks to these herbs, thanking them for their energy, um, just enjoying the time of being with them and getting really excited about all of the healing that they're going to offer to me and everyone else who takes this oxymel. Once the herbs are off their stems, I will pray over them and cut them up just slightly in order to increase their surface area and make sure that the vinegar and honey gets all around each piece of herb and gets as much out of each piece of herb as possible. I'm not going to pulverize my herbs. I'm just cutting them up gently. I'll add my herbs to the jar and now it's time for the vinegar and honey. For a medicinal oxymel, you want to use raw unfiltered uh, apple cider vinegar as well as raw honey. This maximizes the medicinal value of the oxymel that you're making. If you don't use raw vinegar or raw honey, you'll still have a really delicious oxymel that would be great to use as perhaps a salad dressing or some type of a tonic, kind of similar to a fire tonic, but technically it wouldn't be a medicinal oxymel as it wouldn't be able to extract as much of the medicinal properties of the herbs as raw vinegar and raw honey can. I like my oxymels to be sweet and syrupy, so I use approximately a two to one ratio of honey to apple cider vinegar. So that's twice as much honey as apple cider vinegar. And for this particular recipe, I'm using about two cups of raw honey and one cup of raw apple cider vinegar. I like to start by putting about a quarter cup of the apple cider vinegar into the jar first to wet the herbs and make sort of a safe space for the honey to land into. Otherwise, it tends to kind of clump up weird around the herbs and not go all the way to the bottom. So I add a little vinegar first, then I pour in all of my honey, and then I go back in and finish off with the remaining three-quarter cup or so of vinegar. Because the honey is so thick and you want to get as much air out of this mixture as possible before you seal it, it's a good idea to give it a thorough stir first. Once it's thoroughly stirred and I've topped off the jar, I'm ready to close it. These glass jars come with metal tops. And you can use a metal top when making an oxymel, but you want to be mindful of the fact that apple cider vinegar can corrode your metal top and then you'd have a real mess on your hands. So if you're going to use a metal top, I suggest not filling your oxymel all the way to the tippy tippy top. That way when you close it, the vinegar isn't sitting in direct contact with the lid. But to avoid this situation altogether and make my life a little bit easier, I went ahead and ordered some plastic lids from Amazon. And if you use my Amazon link in the description box, you can order these lids as well. Now that it's complete and you've seen how it looks, I've transferred it to the amber jar that it's going to sit in and I'm gonna make myself a nice and detailed label. All the details about the herbs, where I got them, all the ingredients, the date that I made it, as well as the date that I expect to strain it. Once it's labeled, I'll go ahead and write this recipe down in my Book of Shadows so that I can replicate it in the future. Unlike tinctures, oxymels do well with a little bit of heat. So I'm going to be sitting this jar in my windowsill for about a week or so before transferring it to a cabinet where it can sit at room temperature for about another six weeks. I don't want to leave my jar in the windowsill for longer than a week because I don't want the UV rays of the sun to damage the herbs inside of the jar. And if I didn't have an amber jar and I was working with a clear jar, then I wouldn't leave these on a windowsill at all. Instead, I would just put them straight into a room temperature cabinet. 
After six weeks, I will strain these thoroughly and I'll be left with a beautiful syrupy amber colored potion full of magical and medicinal energy. So witches, thanks so much for tuning in to this video on how to make an herbal oxymel. I hope that it was helpful or that you just liked it. And if so, make sure to click the thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, just leave them for me down below. And of course, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Click on the bell button so you're notified every time a new video comes out. You can follow me on Instagram at Bronxwitch, and I will see you in the next video. Blessed be. Okay.